morning guys and welcome back to Saturday. Sam and I are headed out. We're doing a Saturday shopping. That's the girls behind. They're playing VR. You guys know the girls got VR for Christmas. They each got one. They got it a couple days after Christmas or like a week after Christmas. Um, some of their friends were playing it. They got it for Christmas and it was something that they didn't know they wanted and so they didn't ask for it but it turns out that it was something that was really close to their heart so they got it. And it's super good for us because we got out of the house on our own and it rarely ever happens so we're doing our Saturday shopping. It's Saturday uh, just one more day and then we're back to regular school. I've seen in some places that kids have already gone back to school but not us in Canada. We get off super close to Christmas and then we get two weeks pretty much after Christmas off. Anyway, we're headed to the store and I'll catch up with you again when we get back. So we are in, it is really cold today, but I want to show you guys one of my girls' favorite dinners ever. It's called, what's it called? Carabinera. Carbonara? Yeah. Carbonara. It's, uh, it's not a Chinese dish, it's an Italian dish and Sam's mom made it. It's literally Gabby's favorite dish ever. You use these kind of noodles. I hate big, thick noodles like this, but this is the only the meal that I like it. That means it's cooked. If it's chunks of it. If it's yeah, chunks. Well, like mixed in the thing. So are you saying Dad cooks it bad? It's like I, I, I pick it up and there's it? like it looks like scrambled eggs. Do you want to cook? Mm -hmm. Do you want to cook? No. But you're not even making it right now. So what are you doing? Dad is making it. I'm not making it. Okay. So anyways, it's bacon and made into these little tiny pieces. And then it's pasta. So when you're done with the pasta, you drain it. And then what do you do after you drain it, Sam? You throw in the bacon, an egg, and some cheese. So you pour, you put an uncooked raw egg into the pasta. After it's drained, you put a raw egg in there and then it cooks in the heat of the pasta, right? right. And it makes it kind of sticky. Do you yeah. use two when you make like a double batch? Uh, I don't know why I never use two. I only use one. Dude, we have okay. so many eggs. Start using the eggs. Oh, you're such a cute baby. <laughs> Anyways, so after he puts the egg in, all he does is put the bacon in. And then the thing that holds it all together is Parmesan cheese. And I'll show you guys when it's all cooked, but it is literally, my kids love this. Gabby is incredibly picky about food. So picky. If it's sugar, she loves it. If it's junk food, she loves it. I think a lot of teenagers are like her. But one food that Sam cooks that she loves is this carbonara. She loves it. I'll show it to you guys when it's all finished. Okay, here we go. This is what the pasta looks like. Oops. And then he cracks the egg in there. And then mix it. Mix it up. And it makes it see the cook see it? See all the slimy? <laughs> it's cooking. <laughs> it's cooking. But you just keep mixing it. You can see little bits of white. See that white egg in there? Did you guys see it? You see little flecks of white? This is like an heirloom recipe, you guys. Yeah. Then you add the bacon, as much bacon as you can, as much bacon as you as you have. That's like the best part of the whole recipe is the bacon. Yeah, without the grease. <laughs> no grease. You have to drain it first. Look at how much bacon we have. Yeah, but it all goes hidden in there. So there's the bacon all in there, and then you just keep mixing it up and the heat from the bacon. Also continues to cut, cook the egg. You heard Gabby complain about the egg. I've never even seen the egg in the pasta before, so. It's because she sees egg and she's like, yeah, oh, there's an egg there. But yeah, I love eggs. It's mixed in, but you don't notice it. Like you don't think that this would taste good, but it's so addicting. Like everybody in our family loves it. You add the cheese. Now you add the cheese. Lots and lots and lots of cheese. And then we keep the bottle out and people add more cheese to their bowl. So this is what it looks like pretty much done. Yeah, pretty much. This is what it looks like pretty much done. And then people come and they add more cheese to more their cheese. own bowls. But it's go. called, what's it called again? Carabanera. Carbonara. Carabanera. Carabanera. It sounds like burnt stuff, but I don't know. Carabanera. It's oh, our favorite kind of pasta. I like it's good enough you could take it to a dinner party kind of thing, but it only tastes good hot. Isn't that weird? Only tastes good when it's hot. Once it yeah. dries out, it's like blah. I wanted to show you guys. I don't know if you guys can see it. 
Can you see how red her body is and her, like her skin is? See if I can get her to roll over. Roll over and let me roll your, let me, let me see your belly. Oh, I'm not, I'm not gonna be able to do it. But underneath her, when she lays down, her whole belly is pink, like bright pink. And it's because she sits in front of this fire all day long. She just sits there, Ellie sits there, they all sit there and she just gets so hot. Dinner is done and so are our rocks. It honestly is so much money for supplies to tumble rocks. That's why rocks cost so much money, I guess. But this is what we ended up getting. I wish I had known and actually put more in there. Tumbling rocks is something that we'll do in the summer more, but I don't know if you can really get a good idea. This is my favorite one. You can literally see through it. And they're a lot more shiny and beautiful in the light. Anyway, I love them. I love the small, tiny ones the best. These are the, my favorite ones. I love the tiny, little ones. I wanna have like a whole big bowl of them. It's literally been dark and dreary again all day, hardly no sun. I always feel the most off when it's like that. But I wanted to tell you guys this quick little story before we go out to do chores about what happened to me a couple of nights ago. So a couple of nights ago, I woke up in the middle of the night and my kidney was hurting me. And I'm not someone who has kidney infections or urinary tract infections ever. I don't ever get that, ever. My kidney was hurting. And I, sometimes I'll get like a stabbing pain in my kidney, like over the years I've gotten that, like just so random, like maybe four times my entire life and always goes away. So I wasn't overly worried or alarmed, but I just was like keeping note of it. It's just one of those things, whenever you notice a symptom that isn't something that's usual for you, you just like make note of it and then keep an eye on it. So it was just annoying pain. It wasn't like so, so, so bad. So I went back to sleep and then when I woke up, I noticed that I still had the pain, but it was like, just a little bit of a pain, just an annoying, just an, an annoying feeling. So throughout the course of that day, I noticed that it continued to stay. It stuck around for the whole entire day. And as it started to get into the nighttime, it started to get a little bit worse. It was in my side at first, and then it started to move around into my back. And I knew it was right away, it was my kidney. Um, but that's never happened to me before. So I asked him to pick up some cranberry juice when he went to the store and he did and I drank it. And I drank a huge glass of it and in about an hour and a half, the pain started to subside. The pain started to subside a lot. And then by the time, and then I drank another huge glass of cranberry juice. By the time I went to bed, the pain was completely gone and I drank another thing. I drank two glasses of cranberry juice today just to make sure, but I haven't even had any of the pain at all. So I know it was just a urinary tract infection. It was just starting somehow. I got bacteria in there and was starting to get an infection. And what's weird about this story, you're probably thinking, yeah, so who cares? Well, it's weird because I never get infections. I never get colds. I never get the flu, knock on wood. I don't get sick ever. But I was thinking this morning about how like, as a family, we never get sick. We never go to the doctor. We never go to the doctor. Like, Shelby had a fall a year, a year ago, and she's going to the doctor for some, some stuff right now. But before that, our doctor hadn't seen her for six years. And he was like, holy heck, like why are you guys not coming to see us? And I started wondering, like, what the heck? Like, why don't we go to the doctor? We live in a country where healthcare is free. We can go whenever we want. Like, if we have a headache, we can go to the doctor. Like, we can just go, and it's not, it doesn't take weeks for us to get in, just a few days. Um, so I started thinking, like, why don't we go to the doctor? And the reason that we don't go to the doctor is because I have such a natural way of treating stuff. Like, I've learned over the, over the years. Like, this is something that you guys don't know about me. I believe in natural health and natural medicine. I believe that food is medicine. I believe in like maintaining health. I believe in I believe in preventing issues so that you don't have to heal them. So that's what I do. We always like prevent stuff. We're always like on this preventative path. But when we in the past when we do get sick or we or we do get something, I always have some kind of natural way of treating it before it gets out of hand. Obviously, you have to go to the doctor if there's a problem. You do, but I found for me and for my family that if we take, if we are always noticing when something is off, we can treat it right away. I feel like, especially for me, 
well, even for my kids, like even for Gabby, Gabby's like me, she never gets sick. But I just feel like because we don't go to the doctor and we don't take a lot of medicine, we treat everything naturally with food and herbs and stuff, natural stuff that we have around our house, I just feel like it has made our immune system so much stronger. So I woke up this morning so grateful that the pain in my kidney is gone. It's completely gone, I feel nothing. Um, I started taking my probiotics. I have probiotics that I don't take all the time, but I do whenever I have any kind of an issue like that. It's another thing that I do take. It just amazes me how much you can cure and take care of at home. Obviously, if you have a serious issue or if you're medically fragile, you're gonna need to go to the doctor for, for a lot of things. But for us, we've just always done this natural path. And I was thinking today how like, we never have to go to the doctor, not ever. Like it's just shocking how little we have to go to the doctor. And I really believe that that's why. Part of my journey for this year um, in getting closer to God is learning to share more of myself. I want to share more of myself I, without being worried that people will take offense. I know that there will be some people out there that will take offense to me saying that. There'll be people that will say that I'm trying to tell people not to go to the doctor. No, that is not true, especially if you are medically fragile or in a high risk group, you need to go to the doctor. You should go to the doctor. I'm talking about, for me, I know I did a lot of studying in natural health and I know a lot of remedies that are natural and for me personally and for my family, it's benefited us in so many ways. Like I can't believe how our life has unfolded going down that route. So even with our animals, with our chickens and with our goats and with our horses, there are so many natural things, mostly with our chicken. There's so much benefit to natural health and natural health practices. But anyway, I just want to share that with you. All right, you guys, we gotta go out and we gotta do chores. Are you guys ready? I use natural treatments for all the our farm animals. Like That's insane amounts of stuff. Our dogs, I use natural dewormer. Same for our goats, natural dewormer, Ellie. because it's so much easier on their system than than the other stuff. We hardly ever have any kind of like medical issue with our dogs. I like, Gabby, call your dog. it's cold you guys. I don't use it as much with the horses because I feel like horses are so fragile. I just don't wanna, <laughs> uh, but I use it a lot with the goats and the chickens and the dogs and the, and the cat. But let me know. Woo! <laughs> let me know if you want me to make a video on the stuff that I use to treat common issues with our animals. Because it's so easy and I oh, I use stuff that everybody has in their house. Not like stuff that you have to try and not like stuff you have to try and figure out what it is and like I read stuff sometimes and I'm thinking like oh that has to be for a different country because I've never even seen that product before. <laughs> Little Lucy's out. <laughs> oh look and he's laying in the doorway. That has been working so well. Ellie, hey, don't you dare. That little pencil bar has been working excellently. <sighs> The goats all just ran right past me. I opened the door and they were like, it's too cold. <laughs> they pushed me. I almost I fell on the ground. Know. What? That's why I didn't let anyone in. I know. <laughs> you waited for me? Except for Lola. Normally, what I do is I like go from one door to the next. If they're surrounding one door, I'll sneak to the another one. Oh gosh, not you. Out. Come on. Come on, baby Lola. All right, here. <laughs> Whoa, you see, Sophie just wrangled the coat. Oh my God, get out. <laughs> I've never seen her wrangle a goat before like that. Go in there, baby. She's waiting for her food. Do you see how she's standing in her bucket? Don't you know that you're beautiful?